Happy New Year, everyone. As the time theme holidays, I think it's probably best to talk about some of the highlights of last year. We do like two for coasters, two for Vanguard, three to something for the future. It's New Year's. I don't know what this year was. You know, because it's the kind of content we cover on this channel, which you can subscribe to or tell your friends to if you enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, cue the intro. Vanguard. This has been kind of a mixed year for me in terms of posting and being competitive. Well, I've done a lot of kind of mini series here, like the blind build, where I tried to blindly build a deck out from first impressions, or the 40 minute video essay on my 10 year history with Vanguard since day one that anyone watched. To the random deck profiles, competitive talk about my boy Greedon, and apparently you guys really like tier lists? Noted. My store on TCG Player has been going pretty well. Link will be down below if you guys want to check that out to help me support the channel. Helps us be able to afford things like being able to go to Vanguard events or amusement parks and all that stuff. And speaking of being competitive, for various reasons, I completely missed out on both Spring Fest, Dance, Worlds, Winter Fest, whatever Bridgeford wants to call it these days. But I at least got to play bro. This year I ended up playing Mahar Nirvana. You guys know that's one of my favorite Dragon Empire decks because it's Red Chrono Gen and the Phoenix Dragons. And back then it was pretty competitive, but let's just say there's a reason I never really did a vlog that event. Unlike taking set 3 Greed on to the first year and absolutely destroying everything. Hashtag Greed for Greed on. But the big bird did end up redeeming itself. I ended up winning one of the PPO events at a local convention. And I really hope that something happens with that circuit so my invite will matter. Then during Spring Fest, I went down to another convention based circuit at TCG Con and ended up getting top 8 there with Grubidia. So you boys still got it, I just haven't gone to the Bushy Road event to prove it. And speaking of official Bushy events, this has been a good year to be a gear chronicle. And I'm talking like two different formats, two different decks that had to get hit by the ban list because they were that broken. Now I don't personally have too much experience with either Mr. Fleur Dragon or Steam Maidens because my locals are 99% standard, but let's just say if I had the opportunity I was ready. One deck I will definitely be rocking though, I don't know if you guys heard about this, and then a couple months ago they announced that a certain deck would be coming back to deformat based on a certain my favorite card of all time. That may be coming out at the end of February, just like the original deck, just like half the Gear Chronicle announcements are. I swear this is literally my claim. Corona's just back, baby. Dude, I cannot wait. Oh, I've been proxy testing this thing as much as I can in preparation whenever I get the chance to. And speaking of proxy Gear Chronicle in D format, I made a ride line. There's Check the, check the video. I worked on that for a couple months in terms of playtesting everything, the iron out the details, making sure it's fair and balanced, and just generally trying to get the vibe of what Gear Chronicle would be 3,000 years into the future when all the Dark Stasis got integrated to each other. Chronostasis was probably a big thing for me this year in terms of making my own custom cards, and I had a lot of fun doing that. Make sure you check out the video once again, because that was one of my favorite things this year. Next number is zero. Uh... Zero things really change with my channel here. I'm still seeing at under 100 subscribers when this video goes live, even though I try to make that my goal for this year and I really try to push myself to triple digits. Chat to your boy Devlin though, my friend, who just reached it, so check out his channel if you haven't already. At this point, I think we're pretty stable if you've ever seen my intro video or anything I've really talked about. I do Vanguard videos here, I do coaster videos here, and the occasional video game stuff, mostly for Pokemon. I don't want to nix that one as much as move it to a different thing. You guys may have heard me talk about Skyridge games a while back. I was using that for all the various board game stuff that I've been working on. And that channel hasn't really done anything, because I don't really think of a good way to videoify updates on games without making it plagiarizable. So perfect name there already has gaming in it. I think we're gonna move all my Let's Play based stuff over there. Now I'm still gonna be running video game stuff from time to time, but I think that's more gonna be more essay style or like a challenge run of Pokemon and stuff like that. I have a couple of different ideas in the back burner for that already. But in general, like most video game stuff will be relegated over there to Skyridge games, as opposed to all of the card game and coaster stuff staying here. So make sure you subscribe to both. Speaking of coaster stuff, we did two big trips this year. Let's talk about one thing in both of them. So starting my year off, I went over to the Virginias. No, you don't count. Kings Island, you're literally my home park. And that was for Bush Gardens Williamsburg. 
This has always been kind of a buckless part for me in terms of everyone's always talking about theming being so intricate, having such good rides, and just like the atmosphere in general. Yeah, you're right. I love it there. We get the Bavarian pretzels, the random wildlife, the insane European facades everywhere. Or the rides? This was a good park. Like, I don't know why it took me so long to get to freaking Bush Gardens. I'm so sad I never got there for Big Bad Wolf. Much less for Dragon Fire closing. God knows how early in my life. But what was there? Alpine Guys. Might be my new favorite inverted coaster. Freaking Real Bolton is like surprising me in all the right ways. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone. And of course, their new for 2020 attraction finally opened. And that is the intimate goodness that is Pantheon. You guys already know about it. It's an insane ride with the swing launch thing, the freaking random airtime hop in the middle of it where you just get absolutely destroyed. Them stealing RMC like moments for the ride and just like in general, like, all it needs is theming. Speaking of RMCs though, I did end up hopping over to King's Dominion while I was up there. Not much has changed in the last decade since my first visit other than an RMC conversion. Anaconda survives for some reason. And the new Jungle Expedition retheme is really cool and gives me hope for all the rethemes that Theater Fair is doing next year. Also, I 3 or 5 is still insane. I really need to update my top 10 list sometime in the future. Especially for the second highlight this year, which was X2. So every year I usually do a coaster trip around August 18th, which is National Coaster Day. And this year I went to California. I think the whole state is just the SoCal area, so like Six Flags, Knott's Berry Farm, and somehow I managed to shoehorn in a trip to Disneyland, which was a highlight on its own. But honestly, there's a whole video for that and all these other things, so make sure you check them out. Anyways, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was I was getting close to my 300th roller coaster, so I want to make that credit a really big landmark. And I figured what's more iconic to do than the last great disaster piece from Aerodynamics. Now granted I didn't have a perfect experience on it, I'm a backseat which was cool, but I ended up riding on the outside row, which I later learned is a lot rougher than sitting on the inside. And let's just say those fourth dimension tracks ride a lot differently than any other coaster. Minor concussions aside though, it was oh my god. There's no way to describe these things, like the way that you rotate or control around the track as you go, combined with normal forces, given the same scale as the 200 plus coaster, it still has all these inversions and tricks on it. It's completely unique. You have to go try it. It's the only way to describe it. Finally, we're talking about the future, and if you guys want to help support the future of this channel, make sure you check out Raise Energy using my code down below, or of course check out TCG Player because both of those help me to afford to do more cool stuff with the channel. Upgrades that are needed, like this webcam that I had to recently downgrade to because I would like to bring back remote fights. Those of you that previously participated in Bro might know the format, just have a webcam, point at your board, and then use Discord or some other program to have a card fight across the power of the internet. I think this would be a really cool way to give back to the community and um, post more actual play stuff other than just deck profiles and all that, so I'm going to be using my community tab in the future to announce whenever we go live, and yeah, I, like I said, I think it would be a really cool way to give back to the bigger community across the internet. Of course, if anyone has any other ideas or wants to collab, comment down below, DM me, I guess. I don't know how people do it these days. Like I said, I'm going to be using my community tab a lot more now that I have access to it thing too, I guess travel? I don't know. Right now I'm thinking about renewing my Six Flags Pass, even if Celine's messing up the company completely. Cause there's still a couple things I want to hit that I didn't get a chance to this year, like Six Flags Upper Georgia once Air Force One opens, or go and check out a couple different Texas parks, stuff like that. So there'll be a couple of Six Flags parks somewhere in the future, and top of that I want to do more Vanguard events in real life, so they've already announced the Spring Fest season, I'm definitely going to Chicago, just a question of if I can afford to go anywhere else. And on official events, like King Slayer Card, shout out to them, they're going to be doing a huge event at the end of February down in Florida, I would love to go down there, I'm already trying to plan it out. But of course this is card games and coasters here on this channel, so I would love to hit up some music parks while I'm down there. Might be a little harder with Teen League, because I'll have to find people that actually want to go with me, or just leave me a day early or whatever. But I can probably scout out the local areas for whatever music parks there are, and try to base trips based around that. Finally, real quick giant announcement that you guys probably aren't going to get to, but if you are, the secret word is baked potato. And that is... I may be moving. Eventually. Don't know when, don't know if it's even going to be next year in 2023, but I've spent a lot of time here in Cincinnati. Really good community, like amazing for amusement park enthusiasts, a bunch of locals around here for card game stuff, very wage livable, and of course Skyline Chili. But I think it might be time 
to move on. Right now, I've got like one general area I'm thinking of, either in like Tennessee or the Carolinas. I know theme park wise, Pigeon Forge is going to be huge, or even like we go down to Charlotte, then I move from one Cedar Fair Park to another. But like, I'm not sure what the card game communities are over there. I've checked on the Bushwood official sites, haven't really seen much shop wise, so comment down below if you guys know the area. But like I said, that might not even be next year, it might be even more past that. Just kind of give you a little heads up and suggest some places that are cool down below that have theme park and card game stuff and will be an awesome home for an awesome puppy. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you enjoy. Raise energy. TCG player, you know, fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in 2023. Happy New Year, my dudes. Always. Embrace the infinite.